Life Ruining Revenge on Girlfriend's Affair Partner Six Years in the Making The Backstory I have had an on-again-off-again relationship with this girl since junior high. We've constantly been in each other's lives and even to this day we still talk. I thought I was in love with her, shocker I wasn't, but in high school things got pretty serious between us, and the more serious we got the worse we treated each other when we fought. It was the most toxic relationship I have ever been in but we're actually great friends now. At the time I was working stock crew at the mall toy store. Sometimes it was an early morning shift, sometimes it was overnight, so my sleep schedule was all messed up. We were dating and sleeping together pretty regularly my entire senior year. She had her circle of friends, I had mine, and they rarely intersected. Enter D. Head Kyle. Now, D. Head Kyle gave a bad name to all other monster chugging, drywall assaulting Kyles. He was physically and mentally abusive to his girlfriend, later wife. He manipulated his friends into letting him walk all over them. Got one girl hooked on pills after he got her pregnant so she would be forced to give the baby up. Just a next level scumbag. Kyle was a part of both our circles. He was friends with a few acquaintances I had, and the girl was pretty close to his girlfriend. The girl and I had just had a really bad fight a few days before and had made up in our usual way. As I was getting ready to go to bed for work the next morning, my phone went off. It was a text from Kyle followed by three pictures. One nude of my girlfriend, one of my girlfriend and his, and the last one only half loaded but it was clearly a picture of my girlfriend giving him ABJ. I was furious but as I was already graduated, I wouldn't run into him again to take my rage out the traditional way so I just said forget it and moved on with my life. I was still mad at the girl for cheating on me again, this happened multiple times on both ends so it was forgiven pretty quickly so we fought it out a few times and eventually made up when she told me the whole story. Kyle had told her I was sleeping with his girlfriend's sister or something, and that this was how she should get back at me. Now was it petty and dumb? Absolutely. But he wasn't so bright and the story wasn't so far-fetched that she didn't believe him. She told me that since it was BS on his end, she was done with both of them and we went on with our lives. The start of the long game. A few years go by. The girl has moved to another state but we still keep in touch, and out of the blue Kyle's wife hits me up on the book of faces. We talk about how life has been and what not, where we leave and such. Turns out she's just down the street from me. We keep talking every so often when she texts one day asking for a favor. I'm not working that day and bored out of my mind, so I oblige and run a pack of smokes down to her since she's out and can't get more because of her kid. I get to her apartment and we hang out for a bit talking. We head out to the patio for a cigarette and in the daylight her shirt is almost completely see-through. I make an offhand comment about it and without a second thought she pulls her shirt off. We go back inside and go to town on each other on her and Kyle's bed. We keep the affair going a few weeks then just kinda stop. At this point I felt my revenge was complete. I had this guy's wife on his bed and he won't know till they get into another huge fight. I wipe my hands of the drama and go about my day. Fast forward another few years. My band had just finished a huge show before we went on tour, and as I'm doing the meet and greet thing at our merch booth, I get a Facebook message from Kyle, before the quarantine non-friend messages. Kyle was in the hospital. He said it was serious and had a question. Did you ever spend time with Hannah? I'm looking at this text thinking of all the ways I could mess with his head, but decided to probe a little by saying. I think that's something you should ask her first. He replies. I did and she told me something happened at our apartment. I need to know if it's true. So I think for a second and send him two pictures we took. One of her giving me oral, and one of the aftermath. He just replies, thanks, and blocked me. I think. Good. Now the D knows what it feels like and go about my Mary. But this story isn't done yet friendos. Not by a long shot. See, unbeknownst to me. Hannah and Kyle had another kid around nine months after our affair and it wasn't Kyle's. From the pictures, it was obvious that we didn't use protection and there was no pullout so he immediately suspected it was mine. Hannah knew better since she was already pregnant when we started but just barely. Kyle viewed me as his enemy ever since high school because I, stole all of his friends. So knowing that he was raising the child of someone he hated just burned him up inside. 
he turned to hard drugs and became a raging alcoholic, tried to get information on where I lived, and kept trying to get revenge on me for all of this but failed miserably. Lost his job, his family, what few long-time friends he had. Basically his life just crashed around him. About two years ago I reconnected with another ex from high school and she told me the aftermath. What Kyle tried to do. What ended up happening to his life. Hannah took him for everything in their divorce. Last I heard, he's locked up for robbing a liquor store while carrying methamphetamines and a loaded pistol which landed him in for about 12 years. TL, DR. Guy gets my high school girlfriend to sleep with him, sends me pictures. I do the same years later and it ruined his life. My mom's abuser gets the revenge he deserves. This happened when I was much younger and frankly I'm not ashamed. After divorcing my dad, my mom hooked up with a dude who was really into drugs. I was 14 at the time. After hooking up with him she pretty much abandoned me. I went a year without seeing her and around 15 I finally saw her again. She was as thin as a twig and had a black eye. I immediately grabbed my skateboard and went to go after her dude but my uncle stopped me and just told me, not here, we were at my grandparents house. Fast forward a few years where I rarely saw her and I would hear about the abuse here and there from family. I did not get involved as I was a teenager and didn't even know where she was most times. Of course she never told me about the beatings when I did have a chance to see her or speak with her. When I was 18 I was leaving with my uncle, the one who stopped me years before. He got a call late one night and it was my mom. Her dude had beat her, bad. We loaded up two 9mm pistols and grabbed a couple of bats then rolled out. But when we arrived, the cops were there as a neighbor had called. Mom's dude was arrested and she was taken to a hospital. He messed her up pretty good. Did a year and a half in the pen for it. After he gets out, he claims to be reformed and they hook back up. Now I'm in my early 20s. She is leaving near me and I am trying to build my relationship with her back up. I never would visit her when her dude was home and she would only come to visit alone. I hadn't heard much those days about the abuse as it appeared she was trying to clean up her act, and things maybe were better with him. One day she comes to visit and I notice a ton of swelling in one eye and a bunch of makeup caked around the area. I observed but didn't acknowledge. I knew what he had done. I kept my cool and gave her the impression I wanted to give him a chance as she had begged me to do for years. I invited her over for a cookout and gave her permission to bring him. My daughter who was a baby and her mom were present for this as well. Maybe I should have mentioned that earlier. I became a dad at 21 and we stayed together. This all occurred around the same time frame. Anyways, the day comes and she brings him. I had already stashed my favorite aluminum kids baseball bat by the back door. Kid-sized metal bats are the best for home defense. I led everyone to the front yard to hang out and had my mom, daughter, and my daughter's mom chilling out there by the grill. I knew my mom's dude smoked herbs so I make an implication that I'm growing something in my backyard and I'd like to show him. As he heads to the backyard, I told him I just needed to grab something from inside real quick. Side note. I'm really proud of myself for being able to play this all cool because inside I was raging. I see him waiting in the backyard and I grab my bat. I stormed outside and yelled. So I heard you like to hit women. I proceeded to beat the leaving crap out of him. Shins, ribs, back and arms. I didn't want to kill him as I knew I'd go to prison and I had a newborn to raise, but I did hit his head once accidentally. I just wanted to hurt him good because I wanted to send a message. He crawled to the front yard as my mom yelled at me and cussed me out. She got him into her car and then they sped off as my neighbors stood outside trying to figure out what happened. I kept all the action in the backyard so no one would see, but I made a point to tell at her car driving away something along the lines of, don't let me find out you hit my mom again. I just didn't need cops to come. Luckily, no one called. My mom didn't speak to me for months. Nothing new there. I ended up catching up with a mutual acquaintance and found I had cracked ribs on dude and he had severe bruising all over. He couldn't really get around for a few weeks. Mom's dude had asked said acquaintance whether he should seek revenge. But mom's dude was told he earned it so he just accepted it and didn't move forward. I think he knew that if he did seek revenge on me that my family, very old school, rural country type family, would help him disappear, so I owe them gratitude for their understood protection of me. They tried to help my mom, 
their sister, but she would just disappear with her dude any time loved ones tried to intervene. She is a grown woman after all. That's my story. I'm not ashamed. First time I've ever told this publicly. But all these years later it feels good to let out. Thanks for reading. Emotionally Abusive Sister Sweet Revenge Little bit of background. I'm the second youngest of eight, and then my siblings are my half-siblings on my mother's side. I didn't grow up with them and my mother. In my adult years is when I started getting involved with them. That's when I realize how crappy they actually are. I dropped out of college and leaved with my eldest sister for a few months before going back to my childhood home, which was being foreclosed on because my brother never paid the mortgage. My grandmother left in the house since she had moved. It was my dad's but he passed. The house was supposed to go to me since I was his only child but I was too young at the time, so it went to my grandmother. It was sad to see that I was going to be losing my childhood home because my brother stole money my other siblings had given him for the mortgage and ran off. I wish this was about him, but I never see him anymore. The Story Enter my eldest sister who is an entitled parent of all things and her crotch fruit was also an entitled spawn. Who moved into the home to save money during the foreclosure. Since it would take a few years, we all decided to stay as long as we could. Now my eldest sister, who grew up having to take care of our other siblings, not me, because I leaved with my dad and stepmom, is still stuck in this mindset that I am a child and have to do whatever she said. Especially because she helped me out. I had leaved with her for a few months before I moved back home. She's the type to go. Oh, I helped you so now you have to help me. And of course I did because I felt obligated. She had also helped me get a job at her job. I appreciated all of this but things started to go downhill from here. We were all saving money. She told me I'd have to stay with her since I wouldn't be able to get one on my own. I believe this. I am a new adult and still stuck in little sister pushover mode and my sister knows this. Anyways, I saved $100 or more from every paycheck because we were going to put down a down payment for a house in a while. The abuse she gave me started getting bad. My sister is really trashy and whenever I did something, outside of my race, she'll claim. Why are you acting like another race? I'm pro-choice so she would make fun of me being pro-choice. She hated the fact that I loved my dog more than her kids, she had another baby, Lord knows she couldn't afford another one, and she used to talk trash about my dog. She would take my phone and read through my messages, I'd have naughty messages to my BF, and she'd try to kink shame me. She'd make fun of my depression and suicide attempt and make me feel like I was nothing without her, even though she'd constantly ask me for money out of my personal savings and made me believe it was for baby food but it was actually for weed. She actually went into my room and stole $80 from me for weed. She eventually paid it back but still. I'd ask her not to smoke in my room because I have asthma but she'd still come in with a cigarette or a joint. If I spent money on myself she'd be like. You know we need to save money. But yet she spent $400 in Christmas gifts her spawn would never use. When we worked together, she got pissed off and jealous when my coworkers praised me, and would try to talk trash about me to them behind my back. She was my ride and we were always late for work because her excuse was, I have kids. I need to get them ready for school and daycare. I was happy to see that my bosses never really wrote me up because of her wrongdoings. My manager and supervisor even told me that she was only still hired cause I worked there. That made me feel good about myself cause I feel worthless a lot of the times. The abuse got so much worse and one incident happened, that I don't want to talk about right now, that made me think, I am an adult. I am not a child anymore. She needs to realize that. I hid my money, started being more strict with her entitled child, and whenever she would try to dish me some abuse, I'd dish it back. Enough of it. I decided that I was going to move away from the toxicity that was her and the rest of my family. I took the rest of my money and put down a down payment for a car. Of course her reaction was irate. You know we need to move. I didn't care. I had already planned on moving cities. Two days later, her car breaks down and wasn't able to be repaired. If it wasn't for me getting a car, she wouldn't have been able to get to work. During this whole thing, I was still in a bit of pushover mode and decided to let her use my car for things, especially since I wasn't driving as much. I had nowhere to go and was a new driver. Of course, 
she would bring the car back low on gas and demand I help her pay for gas though she was the one using the car. She let her spawns make a mess out of my car and never cleaned it out. The kid broke the back of the seat off because it kept kicking it. She even brought roaches into the car. The last straw was when she started talking trash about me while in my car. She was supposed to be helping me learn how to drive in exchange for me letting her use my damn car all the time. She was on the phone with her friend and I was listening to music. I was switching through songs and heard her talking. Sister. Yeah. She wants me to help her learn how to drive but I got stuff to leave for. I got kids. She has her dog. She thinks that's something to leave for. Me. Well, I can drive home alone and you can get a ride from, baby daddy's name. This pisses her off and I proceed to put on my music but I can still hear her talking trash. Enough is enough. We finally got the eviction notice and my sister gets upset when I tell her I'm moving to another city and not with them. I was not going to help her rent a house when she has a baby daddy to help her. She is angry and annoyed but I do not care. She is downing me and saying I wouldn't make it. I put in my two weeks. My manager and supervisor says they'll give me a great recommendation for my other jobs and I moved to another city. Of course, my manager and supervisor was right. She was fired shortly after I left because she had the worst attitude and I was gone. She had no right anymore besides using her baby daddy's van that drink up gas easily. She won't be getting any good references because she couldn't learn how to be a kind person. I proved her wrong, got an apartment a month after moving to my new city. I don't feel bad at all and feel like I gave her back so much more than I should have. My revenge is knowing that she needed me, but I left her alone with no help. Before I left my sister did try to guilt trip me. She'd talk about how she'd have no transportation, or how I'd miss my two nieces' birthdays. I didn't care. She said she didn't want to lose the only good sister she had left. No problems with police or drugs in me. Too bad she didn't really realize that she was pushing me away. TL, DR my emotionally abusive stepsister only continued to keep her job because I was there. I was also her only good mode of transportation. After having enough abuse, I leave her with no good mode of transportation and she gets fired after I leave because she only had one more strike left. Payback for an abuser. Edited. Please see starred paragraph below. I'm a caregiver who has spent the last two years battling an abusive patient. This person is a relative and leaves with me. Prior to December of last year, I was willing to keep him in my home, but between Christmas and New Year's Eve, it became clear that he belongs in a nursing home. Unfortunately, I leave in a state that won't remove a patient from the home if there is someone else in the home willing to continue caring for him. I'll be blunt and it won't be pretty. Months ago he developed recurrent diarrhea, which usually occurs at night. The bathroom is on the other side of the house from his room. In December, he had a bout of diarrhea so severe that his bedroom floor and the floors throughout the house ended up with feces all over them. I was recovering from a knee injury and couldn't clean up after him, although I did help him dispose of his pajamas, which were beyond washing, and clean the feces off his body. He promised to clean the floors, including his bedroom carpet. The next day I went to his room to wake him, as I always do, and he shouted for me not to come in because he hadn't finished cleaning his carpet. To cut to the chase, he refused to clean his own crap off his bedroom carpet for two days. Again. This man clearly belongs in a nursing home but the state won't put him in one. Not because he's capable of independent leaving, caseworkers from several agencies have stated that he isn't, but because he has someone in the home to care for him, me. At this time there is no way I can have him removed from the house. I have spoken to multiple state agencies as well as lawyers. The only legal recourse is to provide irrefutable evidence to a large group of people, such as the staff at the sleep center, that he's incapable of self-care. The only other option offered by the state at this time was a suggestion that I should be the one to leave. In that event, they would send people in regularly to monitor him and gather evidence of his incompetence. They would then remove him, having no choice if I'm not in the home to care for him, and I could return to my house. I'm not leaving my house, and I'm sure as hell not leaving him alone in my house. Not even temporarily. That's non-negotiable. So. Tomorrow night he has a sleep study and will be at the sleep center overnight. 
I decided today that I'm going to serve something very spicy for dinner tomorrow night. If he gets diarrhea at the sleep center, he won't be able to control himself. The medical team at the sleep center will have visible proof of what I've been telling his care team since December. This person is nothing but an overgrown infant who needs constant supervision. I want to stress that this man has put me through leaving hell. He has threatened to have my animals put down, to ruin me financially, and to find a way to take my house from me. He calls me terrible names. He has stolen heirloom jewelry from my room. There isn't a single day that passes that he doesn't insult me and degrade me in every way he can. I always looked very young for my age. In the last year I have aged at least a decade. My physical health is ruined. I have severe high blood pressure and anxiety attacks due to the persistent abuse. This man is a monster and I will have justice even if I have to get it myself.